In the United States, studies show that less than 15% of all fourth to eighth grade girls show an interest in STEM topics. And this lack of interest is having an impact on their career paths. Although women currently hold nearly half of all the jobs in the U.S. economy, they hold less than 25% of STEM jobs, even though those are some of the highest paid jobs in the world. Women who do work in the STEM field consistently earn 33% more than women in similar positions in non-STEM jobs. Our next guest wants to change all of that. Luz Rivas received her bachelor's in science and education at MIT and a master's in technology and education from the Harvard Graduate School of Education. Although after that she built a career, a very successful career as an engineer from Motorola, she spent the last decade in science and engineering education and in 2011 returned to her hometown in California to start DIY Girls, a program that provides hands-on STEM education opportunities for young girls in underserved communities. The program is not only giving girls more confidence in their technical abilities, but it's also inspiring them to consider careers that combine science and creativity. DIY Girls is a very awesome pro program that helps you and teaches you about electricity and the different kinds of um, technology. It teaches you about science and different kinds of electric things. I like DIY Girls because um, it, like, it inspires me to do like a lot of electrical and engineering, and also because I get to try out new things that I've never done before, and neither has my family. I have been frustrated many times at DIY Girls. I solved it by thinking and not letting myself down and encouraging myself. Joining us now is the executive director and founder of DIY Girls, Luz Rivas, and someone who's a DIY girl, if you will, Sophia Coloca. She's a sixth grader at Pacoima Middle School here in California, and I want to welcome both of you to Full Frame. It's great to have you. you here. Let me ask you about uh, these STEM-related fields. I mean, you're, you're out there. You went through the program, went to MIT, Harvard. But you're a rarity. Why is that? I think because not enough of us are encouraged um, to pursue those fields and don't have early experiences like I did. When I was in fifth grade um, in the mid 80s, my teacher had an Apple IIe computer, you know, one of those old big computers, and, and she taught us to program. So I was about nine or 10 years old when I, was, I started programming a computer. And that led me to continue looking for more sim similar experiences that are related to technology and computer science. So you end up at MIT, and I'm sure you, you go into the classroom. Uh, well, first of all, you're from Southern California, so you, you're not ready for <laughs> Boston to begin with. But, but then when you go into the classrooms, it's got to be predominantly male, I would think. What was that like for you? I mean, culture shock times two, I guess. Yeah, it was definitely culture shock and also, you know, not having a balance of women and men in the class. Uh, and when I was at MIT, we were about maybe 30% women um, uh, in the whole school. And, but within my major, it was probably about 20%. You know, I studied electrical engineering. Um, and I think it was, it, it was weird to not see women, but you know, it was something I really liked. And I just continued you know, working on it. And, and, and I, I stayed in, in my major and as an engineer because this is what I want to do, whether there are 50% women or not. Right, mm -hmm. right. Well, here's the interesting thing, and I wanted to, to run this statistic by you. The United States currently ranks 52nd in the world in its quality of mathematics and science education. What are the other countries doing consistently better, do you think, to rank them higher? And what needs to be done in this country? Um, I think in other countries, um, society be believes that young children can do this, any young child. Um, you know, there are some countries where engineering is a priority, and in their educational systems, you know, starting at even from pre-K, um, young kids are giving experiences where they're able to build and they tinker and they make things. Um, and in our society, we're not necessarily doing that, you know, in elementary school. And that's why I think it's very important to start early. So, Sophia, you're, you're in the program. How long have you been doing this now? I've been doing this since fifth grade and the summer camp. 
Yeah. And so what do you like about it? What's been fun for you? Well, what's been fun for me was learning how to use the circuits and to make or my own projects and games on Scratch or just to program something. And so, uh, Luce, when you see young girls like Sophia, I mean, do you see yourself as an Amir? I mean, it must be a great feeling for you to go back to the community where you were grew up in and bring these tools back there. Definitely, like <laughs> Sophia started DIY Girls at the same age that I became interested in technology in the same school. Both Sophia and I went to the same elementary school. Um, so it's amazing to go back and see the interest. Now when I'm at the school, I get younger girls stop me in the playground and say, I can't wait to join DIY Girls. And so we're creating a community, um, not just at one school. We're going to expand to more schools in the Los Angeles area, but we're creating this community where young girls have an entry point early on in, in their schooling to get started um, with the skill, you know, learning the skills and, and creating things uh, that will eventually lead them to science and engineering. Okay, so obviously you're impacting Sophia's life, but it, it's much more than that within the community. You must be hearing back from parents. Can you kind of just relate to us what the experience has been like uh, in terms of kind of just the feedback you're getting? You know, I'm getting amazing feedback, and, and it's a community where word of mouth spreads very fast on if you're doing well or not. Um, and I remember last year, one of the parents came up to me like within the first week and said, I didn't know this is what they were going to be doing. Um, I just, you know, I just enrolled her because she wanted to be in this club. It was an after school program. I said, sure. But she's bringing home these projects that are advanced. And I can't believe that my daughter is doing this. And, and right away, they get invested and they're like, what can we do to help? Um, and, you know, they get engaged. They come to our, our program, our, you know, if we have an open house, if we have showcases, um, they offer to cook food for us, you know, oh, so they want to wow. contribute because, you know, it's free of charge for all of the girls that participate. Um, so we, we get this excitement and not only that, that they're excited that their daughter's learning um, these skills, but they're also relating it to something they already know how to do. Um, we've had mothers come in and say, I worked at an electronics manufacturing company, you know, in Van Nuys, and I use a lot of these same components, you know, I help make them. You know, and they offer, do you need some or do you need someone to teach you how to use some of this stuff? Oh, that's true. And so they do have some of the skills, even though they don't have a bachelor's degree, they're not engineers, they're not in STEM fields like what we imagine, but they have some skills that apply to STEM. Sophia, talk to me about uh, other girls. Uh, you know, I know that some of your friends probably participate. What do you guys talk about when you're together about the program? We usually talk about like when she can bring into one of our middle schools or like when we can visit. Because I've been thinking of visiting when it starts back in October to probably see what they're learning now and if there's anything new. And maybe I can help them out if they need help. Like, they're all new there. You're, you're young. I know it's, it's uh, hard to look into the future, but do you think about a career, like a STEM career now? I mean, is that, is it, has it got you thinking differently? Well, I've always wanted to be a veterinarian when I was younger. You know, a lot of the girls in, in the program are coming in with, their, with interests they've already developed, mm -hmm. whether it's a career or a hobby. And what we've noticed is after participating in the program, they find ways that they can integrate technology or something that they've learned in the program. Because we're also teaching them creative problem solving. Um, you know, they, they're, it's, the, some of the projects are difficult and they really need to continue working on them. You know, it, it, they don't finish in one hour, you know, but what we have in the program is time. You know, the girls come twice a week for two hours. And for some girls, it takes them five sessions, and for some, it takes them two. Um, and so I think they're learning to apply those skills to something that they're already interested in. Here's, a, here's the question for you. We talked about MIT, you know, 20% in your, in your range of, of women. But how many Latinas? I mean, that's now we're cutting even to a smaller range, well, right? Nationally, um, there's two percent of scientists and engineers are Latina. Jeez. You know, so Latina women, and here in LA County, um, seventy percent of women and girls are women of color, with over half 
being Latina. What do you so think the reason this, is for that? Why, so this, why is that? So we, we're living in one of the biggest counties in the United States where people like me that look like me are the majority of women, and that's not what we're seeing in tech companies, even in our own city. Do you think there's a reason for it? I mean, is it just maybe that, you know, you're, you're not pointed in that direction? It's not something you think about? What do you think it is? Well, I think the majority of our schools are not offering um, STEM education opportunities, especially at young ages. And if they are, it, the majority of the programs are very short or just talks. And I don't believe that just hearing about a career is what's going to get you excited about it. In, I, what I like to provide the girls is actually experience with building things so that they develop their own interests and have um, real skills. And Sophia, that's what you were just kind of alluding to. That's, that's the fun part of it, isn't it? It's just taking stuff apart, putting it back together again. And yeah. Like for the summer camp, we had a week where like, she knew a friend that, had, that looked at her garage and found lots of old electronics. And she decided it was a good idea. Then Luz brought them into the, into the summer camp, and we took apart. And I actually I took apart an iPod, a really old computer, and what got me excited were the circuit boards. Yeah, yeah. Well, Luz, one final question for you. Uh, I think so much of what you do is, it, it, I, and I want to talk to you about this because the the thrill of it is to go back into the community and engage with young girls like Sophia. But part of your job is just getting the message out that we've got to do that. So do you find a, a healthy balance or do you feel like, geez, I wish I had more time to just sit with Sophia and kind of, or, or is it better to get out there and just get the message out? You know, I have to do a little bit of both. And, and as the organization is growing, I'm becoming more of the advocate and set, getting the message out, right? Um, I have a great team now that um, has taken over a lot of my responsibilities on the day to day. Uh, programming for for girls they're just as excited about technology as I am and that's what I look for um, so we are continuing that so and the girls really like working with other young women that are role models for them too that are all college graduates or college students and are excited about engineering and technology well with your background you could have gone anywhere and I'm sure the community is delighted you came back and it's terrific what you're doing and Sophia keep up the good work and I may send some circuits your way, and maybe when my dog's sick, I'll send the dog to you as well. Thank you both for coming on. Appreciate it. Okay, thank you for having us. Coming up, fighting the battle for the hearts and minds of tomorrow's female scientists and inventors in the toy aisle.